I appreciate the four by five either way. And uh, I, uh, are you in Hawaii? My my Chromebook seems to be not happy right now. I'm not sure why. Um, but is all from Hawaii? That's correct. Wow. I'm on the island of Kauai. Yeah, we'll take a four by five. The island of Kauai. Going ahead. from uh, from New Jersey here. Thank you so much for the hunting tonight. I appreciate it. Wow, we're getting ho that's seventy three in Aloha. Seven three Aloha. This ah, is that's a good example. <laughs> New Jersey to uh, to Hawaii at the same time, kind of in the middle a little bit there. I yearn for the bands. I, much like many of you, sadly live in a small lot, about five thousand square feet. Which means that while I can rock the high frequencies, super high frequencies even, but HF, as I get down past 30 meters or so, things we get a little bit difficult. 40 meters in particular, right? Starts to get a little bit harder to have like a single run of wire. And sure, I've played around with the, the zigzag game across my lot. And 80 meters, though, has always been that kind of out of reach space. So I'm always looking for a way to get an 80 meter antenna that is effective without being so compromised to the point that it's 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 not really going to work for me. And I found something I think is a really good option. I started testing out a remote antenna tuner. The tuner I put up on my roof is a URT 1500 by Chameleon. Chameleon also has a URT1, which I'll talk about in a little bit, but the reason why I went with the URT1500 is I can run a long wire right out of the base of the, the tuner with a radial wire spread underneath it, or I can attach a length of coax to, say, another antenna, if I ever desired to do that. You usually pick one or the other, and, and you that's the way you go. In my case, I took a long piece of wire, pretty much the longest I could. I ran it all the way up into a pulley at the top of a 50-foot roan push up mast and then ran that back down to my property. I'm still playing around with the length of wire, but I'm assuming I have about 65 to 70 feet of wire going from the base of the tuner up to the top of the pulley and then back down. So a bit of an inverted V, although a weird slanty cockeyed one. And then underneath the tuner itself, I have about six radial wires that run about 14 feet apiece. This has given me the ability to go from 80 meters all the way up through 10 meters, which the higher frequencies or the higher bands, so say 10 meters, I, I could do that with a vertical. So having a nice 50 foot, you know, long wire, at least at the highest point, is a nice thing to use and switch to occasionally when I'm playing around with my radios. And I've gotten back to 80 meters, which is a band that I have not been able to use for a really long time, which kind of bumps me out. So the goal of this video is to one, talk about this tuner and, and demonstrate it here with my with my flex radio and kind of show you how to use it and how it functions it's very straightforward it has a bunch of memory channels that can pick up or remember its tuning setup its relay adjustment for any given antenna you put on it but there's a nice little control box that puts 12 volts down your coax and when you click a button when you apply tune or power to it it can jump through its different relay options until it finds a good option for impedance matching now I know I've thrown the word tuner around a lot, but for everybody watching, before you decide to comment, this is an impedance matching device. It's an impedance matching device that we put out at the feed point of the antenna, right at the feed point, for reasons I hope to also demonstrate in this video. So let's go take a look at its function, and then I'm going to explain how this actually works on the desktop and hopefully dispel some myths that I have seen in video form, but also just everywhere on the internet. And don't get me wrong, when it comes to tuners, this is a little bit like talking about grounding. Everybody has an opinion. And I have gone out for information from a number of experts in the field, including Ward Silver, to get their opinion on remote tuners, or at least what the primary function is and why you might want to consider one. So stay tuned for that. I uh, just passed by and heard that one little snippet of you uh, asking about that. Well, I'll let him know what he sounds like. It's Dick, Delta India, Charlie Kilo. I'm out here in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Wow, doing a super job. How much power are you running? Right now, I'm running about 1,000, and I'm on a two-element Yagi up 75 feet. Well, I'll tell you what there, Jake. Uh, you're definitely uh, kicking butt and taking names, man. Well, I'm running about 1,200 here, maybe on a peak, yeah, PP. So we switched over to 10 meters, and if uh, you want to tune this radio up, you got to give it a little bit of power. And so this could be with a CW key, like a straight key, give it a, somewhere between 10 and 15 watts of power. Um, if you were on an ICOM, you could hit the tune button or hold it down. Just make sure you're giving 10 to 15 watts of power. It could be RIDI, it could be AM, I guess, with a with constant carrier. CW works just fine, too. You can see I got some weird spiky bits that are sticking up there. But anyway, if I hit the tune button, 
upper right hand corner, you can see I uh, got a three plus, you know, one match or mismatch. So I'm going to click the tune button on the tuner and let's just keep an eye on that. Okay, you can see some activity next to me. And we should start to see that red line drop down and then it's done. There's your there's your completed tune cycle. So I'll turn that off. Now we have a match. The impedance is all lined up so you can transmit all the way down that line and not have as much power line loss and get your amplified signal if you wanted to uh, to to the rest of the uh, to the antenna, the wire that you're running outside. So that's that's an example. So let's go to 20 meters and see if there's anything going on there. And I'll give it a tune. Yep, same thing. Uh, I'll hit the button. There you go. Giving it about 15 watts of power, and now we're lined up. So now we can look around here a little bit and see if there's anything going on, which it seems like it's pretty quiet. It's uh, 9.30 here, and yeah, it's it's about dead. Let's go all the way down to 80. Oh, watch out for my noise floor. It's going to be pretty gnarly. And we'll hit the tune button again. And bang, let it do its thing. You see it start to dance a little bit as it's going through some options for impedance matching and then we should see that go bingity bang we're lined up and there we go holy smokes we got some noise floor <laughs> actually it was pretty nice day over there today Looks like lots of activity actually on uh, 80 meters. It's kind of noisy out here. They put on some noise reducing. Um, just for a second to get some gas. That was it. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I am in the process of trying to make a report working with the ARRL to track down these new noise sources. And yes, uh, it is an appreciable amount of noise. I did uh, the whole thing like I talked about in the past. I shut my power off to my home. Uh, noise is still there. I, I can't get away from it. So it's uh, power line came out. The power line company came out and did a did a look see at it. Found out that the post office was running a bunch of pulse width modulation LED lamps, and they are pretty close to my house. And I have a feeling that that's what the the problem is. But uh, I I will work with the ARRL and I'll let you know how it goes in a future video. All right, let's give it a little bit of power. Just a little bit. A little bit. Oh, getting up to Alaska. There we go. Right on. Hawaii. I'll be there in a little while. See you guys there. I'll let you know. I've got 10 potas, I think, planned for the big island. Let me know if you're in Hawaii and you're going to be around. I, I'm not ready to tell you the date, but uh, if you're there, you can you can email me. And then I'll, I'll CC you on, uh, on the day I'm planning to do the big pota runs. And I'll be on the big island doing some pota. Bringing about 50 watts. I don't know if that's going to be enough. I heard you got to bring a lot of power if you're going to go to uh, to Hawaii. So maybe I'm going to have to bring a 100-watt radio. I haven't decided yet. You guys tell me in the comments below. Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu. Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu. I do, I do think uh, uh, Josh over there in, uh, in California. I watch your videos all the time, man. I've been watching them a lot. Oh, that's amazing. Thanks so much. You're a 5'9", uh, peaking 5'9", here into Cerritos, California, Southern California. <laughs> it's great. I think this is the first time we worked, too, so I appreciate it. Uh, I, I am actually sitting here with uh, uh, Tid Radio H3 and one of those, uh, what is it, the 660s, the two-way radio with 660 antennas you oh. did a review on. It's a pretty good antenna. I can't lie. Yeah, I got to say, that 660 was a total shocker to me. I did not expect it to be as good as it was. What are you talking to me on for uh, HF? Right now I'm on a FT710 and a NZ halfway vertical resonant on 20 meters. Ah, uh, well, very good. You will hear this in a video that I'm probably dropping tomorrow because I'm testing an antenna, a long wire antenna from my home. Oh, that's awesome. That's, that's awesome, man. Uh, a little bit of QSV, you you faded out a little bit there, but uh, yeah, you're sounding you're sounding good over here in New Jersey. Uh, copy that. All right. Coast to coast, coast to coast. I'll let you wrap up your uh, POTA. So I appreciate you being out there and activating. This is uh, 73 from Kilo India 6, November Alpha Zulu. So 20 meters are starting to die here. So why don't we go ahead and explain why a remote tuner might be the thing for you. For me, I went with the URT1500 because it will do 1500 watts or I can give it 1500 watts of single sideband 
or continuous wave CW Morse code. It'll handle 800 watts on digital modes like FT8, and it'll do 400 watts with full duplex modes like FM. So depending on what your most common modes of communication are, you should be able to put an amplifier behind this just fine without having an issue. And uh, that's one of the reasons I went with it. In fact, it's one of the primary reasons. I need to put that power down the wire on 80 meters. You can't be playing around on 80 meters unless you're running some kind of power. So there you go. The URT1500 runs for about $900, so it's not an inexpensive piece of kit, but it is handling a ton of power, which is one of the reasons it's it's that price. The URT1 handles about 100 watts, uh, that is about $400. I'll post links in the video description for those that are interested in this. I've now, I'm about to dive into some fairly contentious stuff here, but um, there seems to be a misconception on a tuner that lives with your radio. So here's... Here's your radio, just chilling, right? 100 watt radio, whatever. And next to it, either internal, so you've got the internal type tuners, or you may have a box on the side, which is an external antenna tuner. And this will be fed by coax, right? And so usually if it's an external tuner, it will give you something like a 10 to one standing wave ratio match. Like that, 10 to one. That means that if you're antenna that you're feeding, which let's say is just a vertical piece of wire over here, is a mm, totally mismatch, eight to one. And it's fed by 50 feet of coax in the middle. This tuner will give you an impedance match, this last little bit of coax, to make your radio happy because it's expecting a 50 ohm load for impedance on that coax. Now, while this is all fine and good, there is a piece of feed line here, and that feed line can and does have line loss. And every bit of seconds that you're putting power down the line, particularly when there's a mismatch of, say, 8 to 1 SWR, you are going to lose RF power as heat. Okay, it's going to escape via line loss. So every time you have a mismatch, you're transmitting power down the line. It's reaching the feed point, and some of it is radiating, right? We know that is what's happening, right? Some of that power is, is radiating. But a lot of it is reflecting back down to the tuner. This is that standing wave ratio, the, the reflected power that's coming back in. As long as you hold down that PTT button, that reflected power goes back into the tuner, back through the radio, and it goes back out as transmitted power down the coax line. So you have this perpetual circle of power coming back and reflecting back because you don't have a one to one or close to match for this antenna. You have an SWR mismatch of eight to one, so you're gonna have this perpetual cycle. So you're not really losing power. That's the first thing that people get really confused about this stuff is that, oh no, you're, you're losing power when it's mismatched like that. No, not at all. It's just reflecting back into the radio and then getting transmitted around and around and around. And every time it does that, it takes another pass, well, you're going against the coax, which is having line loss, right? Because you don't have a 50 ohm impedance that you're presenting, you are losing some of that over and over and over through the cycle of this whole process, right? So that's when you have an internal tuner or an external tuner and it's in your home shack, okay? You get the idea. You're losing power over time. Let's flip this over and now talk about the remote tuner. So same thing, you have a uh, radio at home, it's a 100 watt radio, and then you've got a piece of coax connected to the little control box, which is really just a, a button that you press. And uh, then that goes to your 50 ohm piece of coax with 50 feet of coax to the tuner box. And this could be on your roof or something like that, that's how I have mine set up. And then out of that comes a wire. In my case, it's just a long wire. Again, it doesn't matter. Now, let's say this wire again for the frequency I'm trying to operate on, which is, I don't know, uh, 3.895 megahertz. So, okay, this is, let's say, not a correct match. Let's use the same numbers. It's an 8 to 1 match to this frequency of 3.89. And I start putting power down the line. So it's going down it's going down, it's hitting the tuner after I've done the tuning cycle, and then the power, some amount of it is, is going out of the tuner, right? It's the same thing as before. The difference is, is through this whole period here, this 50 feet of line 
back to your radio is all 50 ohms. Everybody's happy between the tuner and your radio, we're pretty happy. So the reflected power that was the thing we were losing power on on the first example with the in, our internal tuner, now we don't have that problem where it's reduced much less. So maybe it's 10% loss over time or something like that because there are inefficiencies in every tuner and again, impedance matching device that you have here. So the advantage of a remote tuner is just that. If you had 100 feet of coax, 150 feet of coax, I don't know, 25 feet of coax, doesn't matter. If you have a largely mismatch antenna here and you don't have anything in between the antenna, aside from maybe an in transformer like um, a 49 to one ballon or whatnot, you still are going to lose some amount of power via the feed line, right? And that perpetual cycle of power going out and back and out and back via reflected power and retransmitted, you're still gonna lose more and more power over time. The remote tuner helps out with that. At least that is its major selling point. That's the reason why people buy remote antenna tuners. And the other kind of novel point is that, yeah, they usually have just a wire lug on the side of it and you can put a bunch of wire out at some length and then throw radials underneath it. And there you go, Bob's your uncle, you've got an antenna, which makes these really good for like flagpole antennas, the, the stealth flagpole antennas. A lot of time they will deploy a remote tuner like this. So again, if, if you need to remember a, a simple way to do this, if you have a transmission line and then some kind of antenna, it doesn't matter what it is. And it's greatly mismatched from the 50 ohms for whatever frequency you're transmitting on, you're gonna be in this perpetual loss cycle where reflected power has to go back to the radio and is then retransmitted and you lose some of that in the form of heat. Less of it is getting to the wire and radiating out as you want it to. If you have a remote antenna tuner, part that's mismatched is this wire. It's still an eight to one wire. The tuner is handling the matching to this device and it's giving you a nice 50 ohm impedance feed line on the side here, which makes your radio happy. Again, the radio's happy is a relative term, but on this power transmit and reflection, you're losing a lot less. So maybe in the order of 10% or something like that. There's math we can do to test that, but that's the major fundamental difference. And that's why remote antenna, antenna tuners are gonna be useful if you wanna just throw a wire outside. You're gonna be a lot better if you go with the remote antenna tuner. Also, um, if you do have like a motor home, or you, you're an off-grid type of guy, you're an overlander, you got a larger vehicle. Uh, there was a company, I think it was SGV or SVG or something along those lines, that made a really nice remote tuner. A lot of people loved it. They went out of business. There are a number of companies that make remote tuners, but um, yeah, you can mount these remote tuners in your vehicle, and then you can use just a, a whip of some kind, like one of those really long CB whips that you know attach to the other side of your vehicle. Well, you throw a tuner like this on it, and you can tune it to pretty much whatever you want. And again, we're not tuning anything. We're just matching the impedance, because some of that power is still gonna radiate out of it, depending on how long it is. Uh, which, you know, most of the time it works just fine. So keep that in mind. That's the, the big difference here. And if anybody tells you differently, well, uh, leave a comment in the video and we'll see if we can clarify this because, I don't know, sometimes I don't do the best job of explaining. But that's the big deal. That's the big difference. All right, so there you have it. There is my thoughts on the Chameleon URT1500. You can see links in the video description for all of the different tuners and as well as the antennas and different pieces of gear that Chameleon makes. Thanks a lot to Chameleon for introducing me to this uh, new tuner that I was not aware of. And thanks a lot for letting me take a look. I'm Josh, KI6NAZ73.